Good evening and welcome to Easy Chat Live. I am so delighted because today I got my hands on someone I've been chasing for a while and I'm really, really happy to have this guest on my show. So guys, I'm going to give you today Tony Reed. She is a blogger and a sales funnel strategist uh, all the way from, where about you now? I'm in Ohio right now. Hello. Ohio. And yes, hello and welcome to the show, Tori. Uh, just, just for I'm so delighted to have you, as I just said. <laughs> Too delighted, I can't stop talking about it. But I love. I tell you why I was chasing you and why I love this um, show today. I am very shy with blogging, and this is something when and I and I found you and I've been following. You know, I'm part of your group, not maybe very active, but that's just the time constraints, you know. But I'm looking at what you're doing, and I read your blogs, and I love it. And you always push this idea that you know you can do it. You know, this is not not so bad. So I wanted to. This is the show about you, and then you can tell us how to how to actually do it. Maybe you'll inspire me, and then I'll go and take over the world. <laughs> oh, sorry. That'll be my style. So tell us, just, just to start with, tell us about yourself and your story and where did you start and where, where are you now? Okay. Um, so I started out in this whole digital marketing uh, laptop lifestyle kind of world. I started out as a freelance writer. I was waiting tables and bartending, uh, got sick of that and decided I want to do something for myself. And I said, you know, what am I good at? Well, I'm good at writing. So let me try to monetize that skill. So I started out freelance writing a long time ago on websites like Elance and Freelancer and stuff. And I kind of worked my way up to writing for major blogs like Lifehacker and um, Huffington Post and blogs like that. And in it all, I even though I'm like, I really like to write and I felt like I was really good at writing. It's one of my strong skills. I also like to do other stuff as well. So the more I studied marketing, the more I kind of realized you can use like so many different skills in that. Like there's a design factor and there's a psychology factor, which I majored in psychology in college. And so I really love that. And so I kind of put all those together and I became a sales funnel strategist and I started building Facebook ads and sales funnels for clients. And now I also teach others how to blog which I think is what interested you more than anything. Um, I'm teaching others how to blog and grow their blogs into a business. So that's well, everything. Everything interests me. It, it interests me how to blog. But actually, I, I really am. I, I'm getting hooked up on people. You're one of those people that I really like. The moment I saw you, I think that we had a very interesting story. How well, how you came into my life. Anyway, I saw this girl posting about the platforms that she's using and saying, you know, I'm thinking, do I need to ditch my blog or should I just move to Facebook? And of course, I'm like, oh yeah, well, I'm here with an digital marketing expertise. I need to tell this girl that she should be everywhere. <laughs> and, and I just had it. And we had a debate, you know, which I didn't like I didn't even I, I wasn't even prepared to it. I was like, oh, this is this is a debate. I'm I'm actually like a, I don't like confrontations or anything. So I might express my opinion. And if I feel that there's a strong open end, I'm like I don't know what to do, you know. I usually kind of back off. But then and then, then I thought that, but look. This was just something, there was this kind of like attraction on my behalf, definitely, you know, and I started following you and I thought it was, it was brilliant, you know, then I found your group and then I, then I saw a couple of interviews that you did. And I, as I said, you know, I kind of took my toes into blogging. I love writing, but English is not my first language. That's a big mental block, you know, and even though I can write, but <laughs> I have to get my daughter with the eagle eye and change a little bit of grammar. So I need an editor. I can't do it without an editor. You know, <laughs> there's loads of, loads of these typos and there's just that you're just sent in to apply your own language onto another language when you're writing in it, you know, but it's, there are different rules sometimes. So, well, so I just wanted, so because, because I was attracted to your personality as well. So this is where I found you very interesting. And then when I started reading your um, blog and you are, I, I've been to your website and I have seen everything there, but I also noticed that you're really utilizing notes on Facebook for your blog posts. Not many people still do. How did you come to that? And did you, do you have any feedback for people who are watching about the notes? So I'm testing out notes right now, and um, I have a few more things that I want to do with it. I just started. So there was a post that caught your eye, the post about honesty, the benefits of honesty, a logical breakdown. Uh, one, of the, one of my favorite posts that I've ever written, which was published on Huffington Post originally and my blog, Bootstrap Millennial. But I said, you know what, let me try out this whole Facebook thing, because I feel like the majority of my, I'll speak for myself, I think the 
I'll speak for everybody real quick. I think the majority of everyone's audience is on Facebook. And that's one of the things that makes Facebook so powerful as a marketing platform. But um, speaking for myself, I definitely recognize that I do a lot of my marketing, my interaction, my just connecting with people. The best connections happen for me on Facebook. So I'm like, what if I bring more of my content to Facebook? Facebook has notes, which essentially is a blogging platform in and of itself that's underutilized. And so what kind of struck this thought for me to use notes more, how exactly I'm going to use it, I haven't officially decided yet, but I'm definitely going to use notes more. And the reason is because we all know this about the algorithm by now, I think, um, that when you drop a link outside of Facebook, Facebook doesn't like it. Facebook wants you to stay on Facebook. And so I figure if I use notes, I'm keeping people on Facebook and I still get to put my content front and center. Um, everything that catches people eye, that, uh, people's eyes, the imagery, the headline that stands out, all of those things is the same format as it is with the regular blog post when you share the note but it's right there on Facebook. So maybe it'll get just as much engagement, if not more. And the so that's formatting kind of is really beautiful as well. There is an advantage to that. It looks really clean. And yeah. I think it looks better than some people have blogs and their own platforms. They just don't look as attractive as, exactly. as this. So, and then when you're sharing, you get your cover. You, you, it shares in a very nice way. You know, there's no glitches, yeah. isn't it? But you're still you're still uh, repurposing the content. You're still using it on your on your blog on your website. Yeah, well, I'm repurposing. I'm um, I'm changing up a lot of stuff right now. So, and one of the things. Mark <laughs> oh, is with us. Mark. <laughs> I love Mark. Um, one of my favorite. Like Mark, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking He's over you. Popular guy, right? Mark, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> He got us all off track. All right. So um, I'm, I'm changing up a few things right now because I really want to be more Facebook centered than ever. But of course, I don't want to just, you know, box myself into this one platform and not have other content outside of that. So I think one of the things I'm planning on doing, and I haven't tested this out, guys, yet. So don't necessarily follow in my footsteps just yet. I'll let you know how it goes. And then you could try it out for yourself. But one of the things I think I'm going to do is I already contribute to several different blogs. And so I'll up my contributing power. I'll contribute more and that'll keep my reach outside of Facebook. The SEO will be built in because other blogs will have their SEO power up so I can get to the top. I can be on the top of Google without paying for it um, or without doing it myself, spending all that um, time on SEO and stuff like that. And I can still have my reach outside of Facebook and I'll use those posts to kind of funnel people back into Facebook is what I'm thinking. Um, to either be in my group, follow me on my page, or add me on my personal profile or follow me there. And then from there, um, get them into my group. So that's just kind of how I'm thinking. So yes, I'll still have the content outside of Facebook, but all of those all of those hoses, Arnie Giski puts it, he's like, if you use one hose to fill the pool, then it's going to take forever. But if you add more hoses to the pool, it'll fill up much more quickly. So I'm going to contribute kind of all over the place and have all of those kind of lead and funnel people back to Facebook for me, because that's where I make the best connections. That's Facebook right. is great for making real, real connections with people. And for me right now, it's really about quantity. I mean, quality over quantity, like more than ever right now for that's me. Right. Yeah, 100%. I agree with you. And I also agree about the hoses. Um, in, in a way, you know, we do, we, we had this argument that if Facebook just disappeared tomorrow, you can't have all your content here and that's it. You know, you do need to have it. And especially the one that gets engagement. I'm not, I don't mean posts, but I'm, I'm talking about things like notes, like, like blogs. You know, mm -hmm. these things have to be somewhere where you own your um, traffic and you own your content. However, there's another interesting observation that I was just, not observation, but a thought I had. Uh, when you mentioned links, yes, they, Facebook doesn't want us to put links to the outside. Even I deal with this all the time because I build people's profiles mm -hmm. or optim optimize their profiles and they say, oh, this little bio, bio and we don't have a link. That we, it's not working when you click on it. But it mm -hmm. is not working for a reason because Facebook is just blocking it in that particular place, you know. And interesting, if you put links into a note, have you maybe noticed, is there any sort of capping on engagement if the link is inside the note as opposed to in the That's post. The thing. And this is why I don't want people to try yet because I haven't had an opportunity to test it enough to know one way or the other, right? And so that's one of the things that I'm testing. Um, and most of my links inside of notes 
are most likely going to just lead back to my Facebook group. So they're not going to leave people off of Facebook. So I have to test all these different things out and see how they affect the algorithm. And um, there are a couple of other people testing it as well. And we'll see what we come up with. But this is totally new. It's kind of like a yeah. pioneering kind of thing. And it could it could be a huge success or it could be a huge fail. And the thing about marketing is that you can't be emotionally attached to an idea. You just have to be willing to test. You have to love the game of testing and seeing what happens and then pivoting from there, right? That's um, true, yeah. I was just talking to somebody yesterday and I said to them, you know what, I'm not like an early adopter. I always come to things and it's, they've already been done and then I try and do them and people maybe buy from them because they just like me and, you know, but this is where I'm going to jump on it. I definitely, <laughs> definitely going to be, I'm going to be very proud. I'm going to be an early adopter with the notes on Facebook. I didn't, I notes were around on Facebook for a while. They're just, mm -hmm. they were just not this attractive. You know, they were never this attractive. And now it's completely different to hear. Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple of questions here as well. We have a question here from Kay Mears. Hi, Kay. We have a few people. So I'm going to say hi, Kay. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Melanie. <laughs> hi, Brandon. And we have a few people still watching. So it's, it's okay for now. But Kay is asking us, um, blogs that have too much going on at one time turn me away. Simplicity is the key for me, so I can't wait to see you. How do you do? Oh, sorry, that wasn't a question. There was a question as well that she said, and she said, I bake. Should I learn to blog for that? I think you can learn to blog for anything, like truly. And I know that that, that might sound cliche or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that the beauty of blogging or content, let's just talk content in general. I okay. think the beauty of content creation is that the best content really comes from people who are passionate and knowledgeable about what they're writing about. And so if you are both passionate and knowledgeable about baking, uh, the rest is just kind of learning the skill. And that really is the easiest part. The hard, Like you can't fake passion, you can't fake knowing what you're doing, right? Um, so blogging is really just one form of content. It has its own perks, just like video has its perks, right? And just like podcasting has its perks. Um, but they're all content. So yes, you can absolutely learn how to blog for baking and you should absolutely do that. People love to read a recipe, right? And so I don't see any issue with that at all. Totally. Look, a, a, good, a good advice for you, if you're only starting, find some people who are doing what you want to do yes. and they are good at it, you know, and then model. I'm not saying copy, but model your blog and your style on that. It will then evolve into something with more your practice. It will evolve into something that's unique to you. But when somebody is successful, that means they're doing something well and modeling, you know, uh, what they're doing. is sometimes a good idea rather than just being, you know, procrastinating because you don't know what to do. So maybe that will that will help as well. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we have Yvonne Ford joining us. Hi, Yvonne. <laughs> one more thing as well. Um, you said you majored in psychology, and uh, this this article that caught my eye about per, about honesty was also on the topic of a personal growth. So, mm -hmm. what does personal growth personally mean to you? How much importance it is, and um, was there any like how do you connect your personal growth, let's say, to business? It's everything. Um, I'm a true hardcore believer that if you're not taking care of yourself, your mental health, your physical health, and if you're not growing, you're not progressing, you're not succeeding, you're not going to be able to move forward. Um, so personal growth is everything. And what you have to do when it comes to personal growth um, and connecting that to your business, in order to own your own business, you have to be at the top of your game. You wear a million hats. You have to be a top performer. And if there's anything getting in the way of that, mental roadblocks, physical roadblocks, doesn't matter. You have to be able to push yourself to figure it out and take action on the steps to fix it. Otherwise, you're not going to perform as well. And that's really the simplest way I know to put it. So when it comes to personal growth and when it comes to like personal health and all those, like they're very, they're very, um, they're very similar. Uh, then, yeah, that really has to come first before anything else, I think. What do you think? In your own journey, yes. Oh, absolutely. I 100% <laughs> agree. I, I actually work on myself all the time, you yeah. know, and uh, I did have a time. I was always inclined to, um, I was always reading uh, self-development books and I was, I, this was always something that I really loved. But when I was young, I, when I, when I was in my twenties, I was always, I'm a very high energy person and I never needed to do it consciously you know things were just happening naturally and then in my 30s I had a dip in the self-confidence and only about four years ago when I started 
then consciously bringing myself back and working on my mindset. And it pays off amazingly. And the more you do it, the more you learn and the more you grow. And now I'm an absolute personal development growth hacker. 100 <laughs> percent this is what i do and i'm every day and maybe it's not you know i'm not a perfectionist but i always try and do better so even though i feel like i'm procrastinating i'm not doing anything and then i look back what i've done let's say in the last eight weeks and i'm saying oh my god this is like the world of difference in my life so this is happening and it's just taking one step i always say you know you have this big ladder that's going somewhere to your goal and you take one step at a time and that's that's what what i'm doing in your life, um, what were the most important mindset changes, do you think, with the whole growth and development that made a huge difference for you? Uh, the biggest? Oh, oh, man, there's so many. You're going to make me pick one? <laughs> <laughs> you made a couple. Three? Okay. Um, the big one was, I'll keep it to the business era of my life, the entrepreneurship era of my life. Yeah. One of the big ones was, oh, with blogging specifically, I think this is good for a lot of bloggers to learn. And I think it, w it was a big lesson point for me. Before I started blogging professionally, I blogged as a hobbyist for a very long time. I've been blogging since adolescence. I'm, I've always written. Um, and, you know, when you start out blogging, a lot of bloggers are new. They're starting out. They treat it very much like journaling, right? That's what I was doing. Too. You treat it very much like journaling. It's very much about self-expression. And it's very much about me, me, me. And when you try to turn that into a profession and you try to monetize it, there's this point, and I don't remember exactly when I learned it, but there's this point um, somewhere where I figured it out when I started studying marketing that it can't be about me, me, me. When you are blogging and you want to turn that into a business or when you want to create any kind of business, take the blog out of it, it's really about your reader. It's really about your audience. And even if you're expressing a story or telling anything like if I were to tell a story right now about how I learned this lesson, it would have to be to teach you. It would have to be about you guys at the end of the day. And so that's one huge. Um, it's a huge really one. good one. It's I'm so delighted that you said that about yeah. you. You just said this one. Um, this is the realization that a lot of business people don't even have about their service. They don't mm -hmm. see that they serve, but they are not actually serving it really in a true sense to their customer and just as you said it's all about me 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 the moment you have that mindset shift and the more you understand about how much you need to give not need need is not a good word how much you should give yeah it is not a good word how it's much, how much give. you give then <laughs> it all get, gets re-given back to you and often mm -hmm. in a monetary form, so which yeah. is great as well. So you know, the, and the, and the energy and, and great gratitude and all that. So this is brilliant. What else? Okay, so another one um, in entrepreneurship, and this is kind of on the same note. This is kind of connected with the last one. A lot of people become entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs because they're like, oh, I don't want a boss. I don't want to answer to anybody. And what you realize after you become a business owner is you answer to everyone. <laughs> There's a, yeah. Everyone's your boss at that point because everyone, it's its really all about everyone else. So it's very, it's very tied into the last thing. Um, and that's okay. Like you get used to it. You adapt to that. You still get to make your own schedule and travel and do all these fun things. You get to set, you still get to set your boundaries and your preferences for how you live and you create your lifestyle around it. But when it comes to answering to people, it's almost like you're an you go from answering to one person at a day job to answering to, I don't know, it depends on the volume of your business, but so many people as a business owner, it's crazy. Um, and then what you said, do you want three? So one more. Okay, one more. Hi, Luke. Luke Vincent just joined us as well. Uh, he's giving some, there's a couple of, um, while you're thinking, there's a couple of uh, sort of advices that Kay is getting here. Brandon was agreeing with what you were saying, Tori, earlier. He said, you can, I think that she was saying, should I learn to blog? You can, Kay. Blogging is simply about another form of getting your message out, which is exactly. Since you are just starting out, you should focus where you're comfortable. That's a great advice. And mm -hmm. Luke is saying as well, if I were you, I would use lives and video. Let your personality and heart shine through, but choose something you enjoy doing. Well, the video video is a great medium, um, definitely. You know, if but if you have, you could do both. You could do live videos and you can still write. If you mm -hmm. are comfortable with writing and if it's something you enjoy, definitely, definitely do both, I think. I okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you have the surge mind, mind, mindset shift for us? 
Yeah, you actually just uh just gave you one. Kind of reminded me. <laughs> reminded me of one of the lessons that I've learned. So when I um when I started, you know, coaching and helping other people, because part of my part of my, a lot of my business is done for you. Um, some of it's done with you, where it's coaching, and people want to learn from me how to take on this thing for themselves. And I found myself telling some clients or even prospects. Um, I find myself turning prospects away. Hey, Amy, uh, because <laughs> I um, they would come to me and they would say, you know, I'm a terrible writer, but I want to figure I want to I need to start a blog is what they would say. I'm a terrible writer. I suck at writing, but I need to start a blog. And I'm like, why would you why would you wear your worst suit to a business meeting? It's kind of how I look at that. Are you better at talking? Are you better on video? Um, and they would say, well, yeah, I'm pretty good on video or, yeah, I can talk to people all day. I'm just better talking. So why not start a podcast? where you're going to look better, you're going to sound better, you're going to perform better, which means that you're going to impress more people, you're going to be more impressive versus feeling like you have to start a blog. And so one of the big lessons for me and, you know, in my learning days of like figuring out what gurus to follow and what what is it that I need to do um, when it comes to marketing your business, you don't need any sort of specific tech you don't need any sort of specific like a vlog or blog. Like you don't need any of those things. All of those things are options. You don't need any specific social media account. What you need is to figure out where your audience is, who they are, and what is your best bet to impressing them and connecting with them and, and um, you know, being able to present your message well in a beautiful and authentic way. And if that is not blogging, then blogging simply isn't for you right now. And once you figure out what your best suit is and you get it tailored to perfection, right? Right. Like, so right now I'm testing out video. I'm testing out Facebook live. Obviously I'm very new to this kind of situation that Juliet and I have here. Once you figure that out, um, how to tailor your first best suit, then you move on to the next suit and you can start figuring that out and expanding your skills from there. But the first thing that you need to master is whichever, whichever skill is already your strength with uh, your strongest one. Did I say that right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that made, made absolute sense. And I actually agree with that. And that's maybe why I was holding back on blogging. As I said, I want to kind of want to do it. But then the natural thing is for me to go and just go turn on live and just go do the live one. You know, it's that's where I'm at most authentic in a way. Uh, writing as well, but that's just time. It's the time that uh, that stops me sometimes, you know. Um, I have a question as well about, you just mentioned that you're new to lives, but I was, you know, I went into your group and I saw your intro video on your group. I went straight back and I recorded my own. You inspired me because you were just so natural and you just went in, just told exactly what you are, what the group is, and it was brilliant. But let me take you back to your very first live video or the first view. How did you how how did you um, find this challenge to go live on video? Was it I you know I know you're a little bit younger than me. Let's say you're probably in a generation that is more used to you know video calls and and it wasn't such a big mental block. But anyway, how natural was it going live on video with you? You would be surprised. I was terrified. <laughs> I was scared out of my mind. Um and it was a huge growing point for me because you have to, I'm as, as afraid as I am of so many things, right? Like we're human. We all have so many fears. Um, and I recognize my fears and I try when it's important to really focus on conquering them. This is one, this is going live and doing Facebook lives. One of the most difficult fears in my professional life that I've ever had to conquer. No lie. I'm very used to planning. I'm very introverted and I'm very used to being able to plan. I'm very like methodical in everything that I do and sitting here on live and not having, um, you know, a plan. Like we hopped on here guys, like 10 minutes ahead of time. And she was like, okay, we're talking about this, this, and this. You ready? And then we hopped on we live. Only got it. Wait, we only got a chance to talk probably for two minutes. Basically. Yeah before this interview and the connection was a little dodgy so we like half the time we're like oh i can't hear you i can't hear you so we really just like went in life which i like that because i find that sometimes i meet with people and we connect and this you, you see these dynamics but they're actually um the best dynamics you can get just when you're getting to know each other and i am loving this and i do all my interviews like that very little people that i've actually 
spend some time uh, before the interview. And then after that, we could be on live all the time talking via Zoom or whatever, you know, Facebook. But this is this is how it's done. When you started and when you were terrified with the videos, was there any techniques? You just mentioned plans. And was there any techniques or any kind of uh, ways that you, oh, oh, OK, so Tori's disappeared. No, guys, well, I'm going to see if I'm going to just quickly text Tori there that she disappeared and we're gonna get her back anyway meanwhile what you can do for me guys is you can really smash that love button and we will see if um, a little bit of facebook juice will get tori back let me see and yes well she's off but i'm going to talk a little bit about um oh yes yeah the blogging oh okay She's gone. One second, guys. Sorry, sorry about that. But actually, I'm not going to apologize because this is live and things like that happen when they're live. So we're going to just see if she comes back to us. Oh, she's writing something. Okay, anyway, with the blogging, I was actually shocked. I'm doing Ben Perry's um, uh, organic engagement challenge. And uh, day one, I had amazing results from my post. I couldn't even believe it. And then day two, he wants us to write something. And I wrote this story about um, me getting so hooked up on the internet. And then we were in the local shop or department store, clothing department store with my daughter. And we were walking down the aisle. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to just scroll down the aisle a little bit. I just mixed up words. And she said, mom, it's alternate. And this was such an amazing story for me because I thought, oh, my God, I'm actually living in the alternate. I'm not living in the real life at all, you know. And uh, yesterday I was actually asked to I was asked if that article could be published in a new online magazine. And I was just absolutely gobsmacked. I'm just trying to feel <laughs> your disappearance. <laughs> okay. yes, it's so I, funny that I just told you guys that I'm a rookie at this Facebook Live thing because I just made the rookiest mistake of all time and forgot to plug in my computer, so it died. <laughs> um, and I like get it out of the room as fast as I could. Oh, to get the room. that's the best! Oh, that's man. the best. No, but I was just perfect. yeah. You know, I did. I shared. I shared a little post that I did for Ben Terry's challenge into your group. Remember, I don't know if you saw that. It was yesterday, and I said, "Hey, Tori, check it out. I'm kind of starting blogging." And I was actually asked um, if I could publish this, if, if it could be published in one of the new online magazines. So I'm off with, I'm, I've started with the buying with my blogging. It's okay, you can you can find it later. I don't, I'm not going to feel bad if you didn't see, you know, like we woke up to 300 notifications on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I get a lot of notifications, but I always feel like I'm on top of my group. So I'm really surprised that it, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're a, planning, you're like, you know, you're in control. Time. Well, I don't know, maybe it just didn't share. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so about we're that. talking about um, we're talking about the live videos, and I was asking you if you had any kind of techniques that you had to implement in the beginning to to do your lives. Oh, um, so when I I went easy on myself. <laughs> so for launch week, you know, I did uh, the six the six interviews, the six guest ex experts, and for. Who else is hearing that echo? Anybody else hearing that echo or is that just me? If it's just me, then I'm fine. No, it's just you. Okay. So I had maybe six guests. Guys, if you if maybe I don't hear any echo, but if you hear any kind of problems, just let us know. Brandon, you will let us know, won't you? Okay. Yeah. And so I had six experts on the first week. And what I did was I recorded those interviews ahead of time. I still broadcast them on live. Thanks, Brandon. I still broadcast them on live um, because through OBS, through technology and magic, magic stuff because um, it helps the algorithm and helps it get more notice. Thanks, Brandon. It helps to get more notice and more engagement on the news feed and stuff like that. But I was very transparent about that. So that's the first thing I did. I went slow and did like recorded and then um, kind of just let it look live and got the feel of that. But then I started, you know, easing myself into real authentic Facebook lives by just doing like these little short tips. So you know how some, some a lot of group owners, they'll do uh, like tip of the day and stuff like that. And they'll just write a short little tip of the day post. I do that written, but I also would hop on um, Facebook Live for like five, seven minutes just to kind of share a tip and expound on it a little bit. And then I'd hop off. And I'm also like really authentic and, and I'd let the group know like this still makes me nervous, <laughs> which makes me feel better because then I'm like, maybe they'll get it. Maybe they'll understand. Um, but I'm like, this still makes me nervous. So I'm only going to be on here for like five minutes. And so 
there's really no way, there's no trick to getting over a fear, I think, other than really just kind of facing it. And oh, yeah. oh definitely. The, the success is always on the other side of that fear. Yeah. So you just need to take a step. That's right. But it's very funny. I can't actually do, I admire people who do short videos and who go in. Uh, Joe Doyle, who was here um, on Saturday night on my show, is a property developer from uh, Dublin. He is doing two minutes. He has a timer, like he has a countdown there somewhere that um, you know, he knows it's only two minutes he can do. And he goes and he lashes out amazing content in this two minutes and it's it's brilliant has the start the middle and the end and everything i can't do this i can talk for 25 <laughs> minutes and i still don't know if i started <laughs> you know and it's amazing because I, I i don't have the fear of doing life um i think at all you know uh, i have a fear of getting recorded <laughs> if i have getting recorded where does that come from how are you, how are you yeah, because, recorded but you know why? Because you have a you have a chance to redo it. When you have a chance to redo it, you're creating this fake kind of safety blanket that you can redo it. And then you start thinking, oh no, that wasn't good. Oh no, you're you're become I become very hard on myself when I know that it can be redone. But let's say this is a live video, a live interview, and then you just you know disappeared and i have nothing prepared i don't know what to do. <laughs> you know and something i had just and it just comes out and i have no option to switch it off or pause or anything and i love this because hmm. that also shows you in, in an authentic light as you said it's very comfortable yeah. you know it's you, this That's is true. what you are you know so if you fuck up you fuck up it's okay you know we're all humans and this is fine this is a social network everybody understands that's what yeah. i really like about it um just before we finish, I really want to talk about your group. I want you to talk about your group and what you do. And I want people to join your group because it's brilliant and it has so much value. Um, it's not a huge group yet, but I just think that it's one of the most value packed ones that I have come across. So just any anything you can tell us and lure people in. Thank you so, so much. Um, so the group is called blog masters and i can drop or one of us can drop a link in the comments for you guys yeah. so that you can uh, yeah check i'll do that out. while you're talking yeah and basically for anybody who wants to blog or is blogging and wants to figure out how to grow your blog into a business or for anybody who already owns a business and wants to figure out how to implement a blog as one of your marketing factors um or assets for your business that's what I've been doing for the past seven years. And so I made a group out of it. I launched it about three weeks ago. There's already a bunch of content in there. I have a bunch of interviews. Um, I also have a free cheat sheet for everybody. So, and the members are awesome, like from all over the spectrum. So I think the group is really something special because it really is more about value. And it's not so much about like the promo, the cheapy promo, post drop threads and stuff like that. I don't even have one of those in my group. Um, it's really about value and helping and support. So if you guys, if anybody's into something like that, come check it out. It's a, it's a fun, it's a fun place to be right now. I'm actually in shock that it's only three weeks old. It doesn't give that uh, impression at all, at all. And it's brilliant. And there's so much in it. So um, definitely join the join the group if you're interested in any way. If you either, if, even if you're not interested in blogging. And you're just interested in Tori, <laughs> join it. It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Tori, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And uh, it was absolutely awesome. And thanks everyone, guys, uh, who was watching it. I really appreciate your time. And hopefully now you have a fantastic day. You have the whole day ahead of you, don't you? It's yeah. Only 2 p.m. It's great. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm ahead of you. So if you need a lottery numbers or anything, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have a good day. Have a good night, and um, keep on dreaming. And bye, 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 bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.